couple of things. We're going to be uh, we're going to read through Psalm 61 in just a moment, and then uh, talk about reading the Psalms, and then we're going to go back through Psalm 61 and pray the Psalm. And so it's kind of the layout for this evening. A couple of things uh, before we we get to that. As we talk about the Psalms tonight, we talk about praying the Psalms, reading and praying the Psalms. Um, a tremendous benefit uh, to our daily devotional life. Uh, it's a part of my morning morning routine. And, and I, as my wife will tell you, I have a very set morning routine, uh, the, the way that it goes. And a part of that is, is, is reading uh, a psalm uh, and uh, doing what we're going to talk about tonight with it. On, so, so let me just mention this first. On the back of the handout you received, there is Praying the Bible by, uh, with Don Whitney, Psalms of the Day. And you'll have, you'll see uh, 31 days, you'll see all these psalms listed. Now, what, what Don Whitney suggests is that, you, that this is just each day of the month, and that like on day one, uh, you just kind of quickly scan Psalm 1, Psalm 31, Psalm 61, Psalm 91, and Psalm 121, and, and, and see which one of those psalms kind of fit where you are. And then go back and do with that psalm what we're going to talk about this evening. Now, the way that I've been doing it is this. I've been working through a psalm a day. And so like day 1 through 30, that's the first through 30th of a month. Then if there's a 31st day, I just review a psalm that I've looked at. Or maybe I go to the 119th psalm, which is very long, and look at a section. And then the first day of the next month, I do Psalm 31. You see what I did there? See, I'm a math wizard. And I just added 30 to the day. You get that? And so like today is the 19th, so today for me was the 49th Psalm because I'm in that part of the cycle. And then eventually, next month I'll add 60. You see how that would just keep moving through until I will have read through the Psalms. And, uh, but either, either way, it's just kind of a plan to help engage the Psalm in your daily reading and in your daily, in your daily uh, prayer life. Something else I'll mention to you is, is you can buy a Psalter. Uh, no, not Salter and Pepperer, but a Salter, P-S-A-L-T-E-R. Brother Dustin just thinks my, he thinks I have dad humor. That's what it is, and it's dad humor. I make dad jokes, but that's, you know, I'm an old man. Uh, but the Psalter is, it's a copy of the Psalms. And uh, this is in the ESV, which is the Bible that uh, I read from and preach from. And uh, what I like about it is, is the paper is, is, is fairly thick, so you can write on it, make notes. And also the print's a little bit bigger than it is in, in most Bibles, which again, I'm getting older and, and that is very helpful. Uh, but, but they make these, you can just look up a copy of the Psalms and, and you can get them. They're not very expensive at all and, and that's handy. I want to recommend two books from you for you and, and I'm going to give away some books uh, this evening. Um, one book I want to recommend to you is a book that my wife and I have both used. Uh, it is called The Songs of Jesus and it is a daily devotion in the Psalms, and it is by Tim Keller along with his wife Kathy, and it's a daily devotion in the Psalms, and, and this is one of the best devotional books that I have ever used, period, uh, and uh, the thoughts from the Psalms are, are very good, and so I, I highly recommend this book as a daily devotion book. I will have one of these to give away if you want it afterwards or not, come see me, and uh, I, will, I will have one of these. I'm going to give, I already know who I'm giving the other one to. Um, and then, then I've got two copies of Praying the Bible. I searched my study this past week for this book, and I couldn't find it. Uh, we redid the offices when um, uh, we recarpeted, and, and a lot of my stuff kind of got turned around in that process, and it may be in there, and I just couldn't find it, or it was with books at my house, and which means they are now in a box uh, while we're still renting. And, and so uh, I ordered a couple real quick off of Amazon, Praying the Bible by Donald Whitney. You heard me quote him this morning. I'm going to quote him again here in a minute. Uh, but this is a tremendous book uh, that will introduce you on how to praying the Bible. And we're going to talk specifically about praying the Psalms. But this is a great little book. It really transformed uh, the way that I pray in my personal prayer life, uh, in particular that morning time with the Psalms. It really had a big impact on me. And I would highly recommend this book. I will have two of these books after service, and if you'd like one of them, uh, just come up and ask me, and you can have it. I don't have any of my own books yet, uh, or I would give them away and sign them, but um, I, I'm not quite there, quite there yet. So those are just some things that I just wanted to mention to you uh, before we get into 
of what we're going to talk about tonight. As we talk about growing in grace, praying the Psalms. And this is a follow-up going a little bit deeper in what we talked about this morning. So what I want to do first is I, just, I, want, us to, I want us to read through Psalm 61. I'm going to read through Psalm 61, and, and then we're going to teach some things about the Psalms, and then we're going to pray Psalm 61. This is the Psalm that Brother Dustin read for us this morning uh, as part of our service. So let's read through Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, I began this morning with a quote, and, and, and I'm going to share it again because I think, I think it is absolutely true of a lot of us. Don Whitney said in this book, Praying the Bible, he said, I maintain that people truly born again, genuinely Christian people, often do not pray simply because they do not feel like it. And the reason they don't feel like praying is that when they do pray, they tend to say the same things over and over again. And isn't that true? That the prayer li- our prayer lives get stale? And, 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 and it's just like it's the same thing, the same old thing, just a different day. And so we just quit feeling like praying. Praying the Bible, and, I, and, and for me, praying the Psalms in particular, helps us to think through our prayers. But not only do they help us think through our prayers, but praying the Psalms also probes our show, our, our souls. It really makes us consider what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what's going on in our lives. It also shows us God. We see who He is in the Psalms. And it does keep our prayers from being the same old things about the same old things. So let me just share a few things with you about the Psalms. And the first things I would share with you is this, is that the Psalms, and my clicker is not going to work. I may have to have help. There you go. The Psalms are a prayer book. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but pastor, I thought the Psalms were a hymn book. Well, yes, the Psalms are set to music. The heading for Psalm 61 says this, to the choir master with stringed instruments of David. David wrote the psalm as a prayer and then told his music guy to set it to a tune. I think that's a good idea, Brother Drew. You with me? He's with me. All right, we'll try this sometime. But it began as a prayer, a prayer from David's heart to God. As such, the psalms teach us something about how to pray. This is where we learn to pray is by reading the prayers of the Psalms. The Psalms teach us how to talk to God, how to approach Him, how to speak to Him. In fact, it shows us how freely at times we may talk to Him. And praying through a Psalm, taking a Psalm and praying through it, guides our thoughts and shapes how we express our feelings to God in a way that honors God, in in a way that pleases God, and in a way that helps us to truly express ourselves to Him And in the end, hopefully, prayerfully, find joy and what is good for us. So the first thing I want you to see is the Psalms are prayer book. The second thing I want you to see is this. The Psalms explore the depths of our hearts. I mentioned this morning that the Psalms contain every facet of human emotion. Every facet. 
I mean, you read through the Psalms, and, and you're just struck by that. There is tremendous joy at times, tremendous praise, tremendous gladness. And then there are times there's just, it seems almost like anger is coming off of the pages of the Psalms. And at other times, there's just absolute grief, inexplicable grief. For example, Psalm 60, in Psalm 61, David is blunt as he calls on God to hear him and is transparent when speaking about how his heart is faint. He says at the beginning, hear my cry, O God. Almost like you could put an exclamation point at the end of that statement. It is very blunt with God. You've got to listen to me. And then he's just very transparent. My heart is faint. It is empty. It, I've got nothing here. Some of us want to deny that we have any feelings at all. You know, we're, we're not going to discuss our feelings. We're not going to share our feelings. We're not going to share them with anybody else. And we're not even going to share them with God. We're just going to keep our struggles to ourselves. We're going to put our nose to the grindstone, pull ourselves up by our own bootstrap, and we're just going to keep plugging along. And those people are such a pleasure to be around, aren't they? They're so pleasant. And then on the other hand, others of us look for every opportunity to let people know how we feel. I mean, you don't have to wonder if they're happy or if they're angry, if they're hurting, they're sad, they're sore, they're achy, or whatever. I mean, they will tell you, you know, you kind of learn in church life who to ask this question to. How do you feel today? Because there are some people, if they don't feel anything, they're going to come up with something. Why? Because they want other people, they want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want They want empathy. They want sympathy. They want people to pay attention to them. There are those people, just to put it bluntly, who want to be the bride at every wedding and the corpse at every funeral. Oh, you know them. You've met them, have you? Indeed. Here's what the Psalms do. When we surrender ourselves to learning to pray from the Psalms, what we we learn is how to pray our feelings. How to be fully transparent with God. How to come to Him. How to pour out ourselves to Him. To direct our prayers to Him. How to trust in His goodness and His faithfulness. And how to collapse into His sovereignty. That's what it teaches us. And then that affects how we talk with other people. And how we can open up and share things. But also how we can know when not to share things. All of that begins to fall into place when our connection with God is what it ought to be. And then I want you to understand that the Psalms reveal who God is. Eugene Peterson wrote, Left to ourselves, we will pray to some God who speaks what we like hearing, or to the part of God we manage to understand. But what is critical is that we speak to the God who speaks to us and to everything that He speaks to us. The Psalms train us in that conversation. And that's true. The Psalms reveal who God is. You read through the Psalms and you find that He is holy, He is righteous, and He is just. And yet the Psalms also reveal Him to be gracious and merciful and forgiving. And understand that when we come to God and and we bring to God our needs, our requests, our praise, even our questions and all that, when we bring that to Him, we do not pray to change who God is. We pray because this God is is unchangeable because he is the rock higher than I. Now let me just mention this. There are these psalms that are called the imprecatory psalms. And the imprecatory psalms are psalms that pray down judgment and calamity. Usually in the psalms you will read them, there will be judgment and calamity being called down upon Israel's enemies or the enemies of the author of that psalm. For example, in Psalm 58... While praying about the wicked, David asked God to break their teeth, to let them vanish like water that runs away, and to let them be like the snail that dissolves, dissolves into slime and the stillborn child who never sees the sun. That sounds harsh. In our culture today, we would say that even sounds mean. And that can be confusing. 
in our prayer lines. And if we're going to pray the Psalms and read the Psalms, that can be confusing to us. Dr. Tim Keller gives us some good counsel on kind of how to think about this. Here's what he says. Basically, realize that calls for justice are absolutely right. And remind us how important God's holiness and justice are. But secondly, recognize that the psalmists did not have the justice of God completely satisfied in Christ. Thus, we pray for our enemies, not wish them ill. Yet, we as Christians can pray these psalms as longings for social justice and hatred against the power and principalities behind the world. Our understanding of the cross means that we pray for our enemies, that they would come to know Christ and His forgiveness. But we also pray that the day will quickly come when the devil will have his teeth broken out, when he will be subjected to the lake of fire forever and ever, when he, the great tempter, will finally be dealt with. So when we think about reading and praying the Psalms, three things to look at. First of all, we want to look at the context of the Psalm. We want to look at the context of the Psalm. Are we told who wrote it? Is there evidence of the circumstance surrounding its writing? Are there things that kind of help us identify with the Psalm? A study Bible can be a great help with this. Because a lot of times in a study Bible, down at the bottom, it will tell you this Psalm uh, and a lot of times the author's already mentioned, but tell you who it's written by, and it may give you insight into when it was written uh, and information like that. I use the ESV Study Bible, and the ESV Study Bible note says this, this of Psalm 61, this is an individual lament of sorts. It serves as a general request for God's help in times of trouble for particular members of God's people. And, and that's true. That's what this psalm is. And so knowing that, that this is kind of a general lament this is a psalm then we can all probably pray at different times in our lives. We can identify with this psalm because we've always all been sad. We've all struggled. We've all been empty in our hearts. Secondly, look for Christ in the psalm. Now, don't force Christ into the psalm, okay? Christ, in one sense, Christ is not under every rock and behind every tree in the Old Testament. That is, you can force typology where it doesn't belong. In another sense, he is, because every rock in the Old Testament and every tree in the Old Testament was created through him, okay? And sometimes, though, we want to force Christ. But in a psalm like this we see tonight, we don't have to force it. When we read about the king in Psalm 61, we know that we are reading about King David. But when we read about King David and we read this prayer, we immediately think of his descendant, David's descendant, who yet would be greater than King David, the one who would have an enduring kingdom, and that is whom? Jesus. And so we naturally think and see Jesus in this psalm. And thirdly, look deeply into the psalm. Meditate on the psalm. Now let me clarify the word meditate. In Eastern culture, Oriental culture, Oriental religions talk about meditation. Their objective is to empty the mind. And so you wind up in some kind of yoga position that I literally, if I could get into it, I don't think you'd ever get me out of it. I mean, I'd be a pretzel from now on. But you wind yourself into a position, and then you do everything you can to empty your mind because the objective is to the emptiness of the mind to find yourself. That's not meditation in the Christian realm. When we speak of meditation, we're speaking of filling our mind. So when I say meditate on the Psalms, I mean fill your mind with the Psalm that you're reading that day. Think about it. Ponder it. Go over it and over it again. Get it so in your mind that as the day unfolds, you remember things that you read that morning. You remember things that you prayed that morning, and it continues to be on your mind. Talk to God through the Psalm. Spend time praising God from the Psalm. And that's where it's helpful to have a daily plan. And that's why I gave you that kind of that plan, and, and you can approach it a couple different ways like we talked about earlier. Otherwise, you may just find yourself aimlessly flipping through the Psalms. Okay, what do I pray? What do I pray? And it's not that that won't work or that you can't find something, but for me, having a plan is of tremendous assistance. So, let's return to Psalm 61 with all of that in mind. And, and let's say that today you were going 
to read and pray through Psalm 61? What would that look like? Well, the first thing you would do, and we're not going to do it again. We already did it, but you would read through the psalm. You would read through it. You may read through it once. You may read through it twice. It doesn't take very long. It's very brief, which is something I want to point out about prayers. Prayers don't have to be long. How long did it take all of us to, 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 to recite the model prayer this morning? Less than a minute? I don't know. It didn't take long, did it? And yet that's the model that Jesus gave. When I read the prayer of the believers in, in Acts this morning, how long did it take me to read the prayer part of that? Not very long. How long did it take us to read this psalm? Not very long. I think sometimes we think, well, I have to say a whole lot. You don't have to say a whole lot. You just have to say what needs to be said. Okay? So you may read through the psalm several times. You meditate on the psalm. You think about the psalm. And then you pray the psalm. Maybe you're praying Psalm 61 at a difficult point in your life when you don't know what to do. And, and frankly, you can do nothing. Have you ever been there? I mean, let's just, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about how to. Let, let's just get personal. Have you been there? Have you been at that place? And, and you couldn't even word a prayer. I mean, you couldn't just sitting there by yourself come up with anything to say to God. If you have Psalm 61, for example, open before you, it's going to help you. It's going to give you words to pray. And so I, 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 worked, through this, I worked through this myself. I, I prayed through it myself. I prayed through it also, and I thought about this also from 27 years of pastoring people and what people face and the kind of prayers that we all have in those kind of moments. And I just want to walk through this, and together let's consider praying Psalm 61. So let's take the first little section, and I think it's the next slide. And we might read, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. And, and we would just stop there. Maybe we'd read it again. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. And then we start thinking about that. And we start talking to God. And maybe we would say, Something like this. God, you've, you've got to hear me. I feel like I'm at the end of the earth. Alone. Where no one can hear me. And no one is listening to me. And my heart, it's empty. It's faint. I, I've got nothing left just take a moment just think through that first line yourself kind of after you've expressed yourself to God with, with that line and, and you've thought about you see you're meditating on the scripture you're hearing God and His Word, and then you're speaking back to Him. You're opening your heart to Him, transparent to Him. You might pick up and say, okay, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you, you have been my refuge. You have been a strong tower against the enemy. God, I, I, I can't handle this. I, I just can't. I don't have the strength to pull myself out of this. I, you've got to leave me out of here. I, I can't find my way. You, God, you've taken care of me before. You've been there. And maybe at that point, you begin to tell him some of the times. God, you were there. You were there when when when. My child was born, and, 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 and it was, we thought there might be something wrong. Or you were there when my mom passed away, and you carried me through that, and you walked me through that. You were my refuge in that. You were there when I was struggling at the job, when, when I had the financial issue. You were there in this health care. God, you've always been that refuge from me. You've always sheltered me. You've always protected me. And, and God, I'm in this place again, and I'm relying on you 
Just take a moment and think, think through that. As you're pondering that and you're praying back to God, say, okay, let's, let's read on. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. And Selah, Selah, Selah can be a baby's name. Very difficult to translate to the Hebrew language. Most think it is a pause. It is a rest. It is a musical notation just to stop. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Yes, Lord. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. So you may say, God, here I am. What's going on? And I just want to be with you. I I need you to shelter me. I need you to stretch your arms out over me. Maybe, maybe it's something like this. Maybe you say my health is failing. Or maybe my money is vanishing. Or maybe those close to me are dying. Or maybe I've got friends that don't come around anymore. Or this, or this, or this, or this. Just total transparency. God, this is where I'm at. And God, you know my heart. You've heard my vows. You know my heart. And you've given me a heritage. That's what the psalmist says. Yet you've made me your child in Jesus. I have a heritage. I can call you Father. And and here's the thing, Lord. I'm trusting you to be with me now. And I'm trusting you to get me home. You might even pray on an evening like this. God, I remember what the preacher said this morning. He said, sticks and stones may break my bones. But he said, God, you'll get me to heaven. And that's what I'm holding on to. Think about that for a second. You read, you meditate, you pray. And then you go to the next line. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. And you might say, God, I know this was about David, but he died. My hope is in King Jesus because he lives. And he's coming back and he's going to reign. God Send him soon. (laughs) And you just ponder that. So ponder that. Think about that. And maybe after you've read that and prayed that and meditated on it, you're your heart is starting like the psalmist to kind of be encouraged a little bit. And you come to that last line. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. And you might just say, God, there's, not, there's just so much I don't know and so much I need. You might pray, as I've been praying lately about some things in my life, I'm clueless. God, I'm clueless. I just I don't know. But I know you. And I have you. And you have me. And so I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. And then maybe you start making a list. I'm going to praise you for Jesus. I'm going to praise you for my salvation. I'm going to praise you for my family. I'm going to praise you for my wife and for my kids, for my grandkids or 
whomever in my family I happen to be thankful for today. I'm going to pray for my church. I'm going to thank you for my church. I'm going to praise you for people there who love me and who are praying for me and who are those friends that the preacher talked about Sunday that I can run to and, and share with. I'm going to thank you for your provision. i got a roof over my head. i got clothes on my black back. I've had something to eat today. i got air to breathe. And we just begin to thank God. And we just say, okay, step by step, you're going to lead me through this day. You're going to lead me through this day to your glory and for my good. I'm going to trust you. Now, here's the thing. When I do this, whether it's with a psalm in the morning or even when it's a sermon that I'm preparing for Sunday, when I do this, what happens to me is I begin to think of music. And the Psalms were set to music. I think there's a connection. I think singing and praying kind of go together. I think the Psalms prove that. These are prayers that were sung. And I think that goes together. Brother Drew will tell you that, that there's been a lot of times when usually on a Wednesday afternoon when I'm kind of, I've got everything together on my sermon. It's not, it'll get a lot more polishing, but I, I will send him a note. And it's usually like this. Are you in the building? And, 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 and he knows what that means. He, I'm looking for him because I'm thinking of a song. And a lot of times it's the song that we sing as the invitation as we worship at the end that is flowing out of my, my thoughts. And so I was doing this this week with this psalm. And it, it brought a song to mind. It's a song that some of you may not know. Anyone here remember Rich Mullins? Anyone maybe my age, up around that age, some of you remember Rich Mullins. Okay, if, if you're not raising your hand, you have been, you, Carrie remembers. If you're not, if, if you don't know him, you are really missing out on something. Um, if you've got like Amazon Music or, or something like that, I use Amazon Prime, you can go listen to him. And he was, he was just this radical dude, sandal wearing, you know, hair kind of everywhere kind of thing uh, and uh, kind of a hippie thing going on, you know. Uh, but, oh, my word, so some of the music that he wrote and put together really spoke to a generation. And there was a song that he wrote called Sometimes by Step. And the second verse of it and the chorus came to my mind. And so this is just personal. This is just i have pretty much giving you my, my own personal walk through this psalm. And here's how my walk through this psalm ended. Sometimes I think of Abraham, how one star he saw had been lit for me. He was a stranger in this land, and I am that, no less than he. And on this road to righteousness, sometimes the climb can be so steep, I may falter in my steps but never beyond your reach. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Father, thank you for giving us the Psalms. Wow. Father, I, I pray that we have learned something tonight, but even more than that, I pray that we have prayed tonight. That as we walked through this, that each of our hearts were in tune with Psalm 61. And Father, I ask right now, that you would encourage people in this room and people who are listening beyond it. There are those in this room right now who need encouragement. They may be the only person to know what they're facing. They've not shared it with anyone, but right now they're sharing it with you and maybe with you for the very first time. Comfort them. Strengthen them. They're faint of heart. There are others in this room. Everybody knows what they're going through. Not everyone understands it, but they know. And Father, I pray for them too. 
God, right now, as, as they have been praying to you through Psalm 61, comfort them, strengthen them, let them know that you are present. They feel a million miles away at the end of the earth. But God, show them you are there next to them in the pew. Strengthen us tonight. Encourage us that we may praise you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand?